Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A week or two ago, I did a kind of overview video where I talked about some of the new features that are in the current beta version of Photoshop. One of the new features that I touched upon in that video is something called generative upscale. And as I mentioned, it was kind of an overview video, so I really didn't go into great detail. In today's video, I'm again going to talk about and demo generative upscale, but I'm going to go into a little more detail. Specifically, I want to talk about a feature of generative upscale. That is, when you use it, it comes with a mask. I'm going to demo how you could use that mask to improve your image. For example, I have this relatively low resolution image of this red-bellied woodpecker. This is 1000 pixels by 667 pixels. If I wanted to print this, I really wouldn't be able to get a high quality larger print because it is of such low resolution. That's where a feature such as generative upscale comes in. With generative upscale, I could upscale this up to four times. And if I make it four times bigger, I'll be able to get a better large quality print. So let's take this low resolution JPEG and open it up into the beta version of Photoshop. Now to use generative upscale, all you need to do once you open the image up into Photoshop is go up to image and then down to generative upscale. And as I mentioned, you could upscale it up to four times. If you go to this drop down, you'll see there's two times, three times, and four times. Now there is a limit, a size limit. So if you start out with a larger image, you may not be able to upscale it four times. And if you try to choose it here, it will tell you that it can't do it, that you'll need to choose a smaller uh, amount. But for this image, I could use 4x. So we'll do that. We'll click upscale. And it will take a second. And what you'll find is when it's done, it's actually going to leave the image in this tab and it's going to open the upscaled image up in its own tab. So we have this upscaled image in its own tab. The original image is in the original tab. So it's non-destructive. It opened up into its own tab. But as I mentioned at the top, when you use it, it comes with a mask. And if we look at the layers panel, you'll see that there's actually two layers here. If I turn off the top layer, you'll notice that the quality of the woodpecker, the subject, goes down. What it did here for this bottom layer, it's just the original image kind of blown up without any AI magic done to it to make it sharper or to reduce noise or anything like that. So it's just the small image blown up four times. The top layer, though, is the layer that has the AI magic done to it so the woodpecker is sharper. But you'll also notice for this specific image, the background on this layer doesn't look right. You can see how it has all this kind of waves in it. But if I look at the original background, it looks a lot better. So what I'd like to do is have the sharp subject from the top layer combined with the nice background of the bottom layer. That's where the mask comes in. When you use generative upscale, as I mentioned, it will open it itself up in this new tab. It will have the two layers, it will have a mask, and it will automatically give you a brush. And it will automatically put black as the foreground swatch. Because if you paint in black on the mask, it will allow whatever is underneath it to come through. So if I get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key, and it automatically put me on black, it automatically gave me the brush, you'll notice if I paint, it's going to allow that lower layer come through. So you could come in and try to painstakingly paint and come in. You could do it. That's one way to do it. But there's actually a better way. So let's undo this. I'll hit Command Z or Z on my Mac a couple times. It's Control Z or Z on a PC. Now, I'm kind of right back where I started. I just upscaled it and I'm over here in this new tab. But I like that bottom layer's background better than the top layer. Well, what I can do because the background is so much separated from the subject, instead of using a brush and trying to carefully paint around the edges, what I can do instead is I could go over here and just click on the layer itself because we have the layer and we have the mask. When you use this, it's going to put you on the mask with a black brush so you could paint on the mask. Go over here, click on the layer, and all you got to do is go up here and click remove background. 
It's going to tell you, are, do you want to discard this mask? Yes, I do. Because what it will do is it will create a new mask. So it's going to take a second to do it because it does use AI to do it. And now you'll see we have the mask already filled in. And it used the background from the bottom layer. So it's really, or it really can be as easy as that. Now, sometimes though, depending on your subject, it might not have done such a great job. It may have been a little bit like rough around the edges. In those cases, I'll show you another way that's a little more involved where you could get a better selection of the subject so that you're more um, able to uh, get a better result. So what we'll do is we'll go up to the history tab here and we'll go back to where we came in with our upscaled image, right? So we have our upscaled image with the bad or the worst background. Again, uh, when you come over, you'll be on the mask, click on the actual layer. And then what you'll want to do is go up here on the contextual task bar. By the way, if you don't see the contextual task bar, go down to window and make sure it has a little check mark next to it. So go to select subject, right? Now it's going to take a second, but it will select the subject and you'll see marching ants going around the subject. Now what you want to do is refine this. To do that, go up to select then down to select and mask. The first thing you should do is go over here to view and choose the background you want to use as your view. Uh, most often I use either overlay, so I have a red background, or I use on black. And with on black, sometimes you've got to come in and move the opacity slider. Now, if you're masking a person as opposed to like a red-bellied woodpecker, what I would do first is go up here and refine hair. Click on this and it might refine the edges. And you can see it actually did here. Let me undo it by hitting Command Z or Z on my uh, computer once or twice. It's Control Z on the PC. So I undid it. But look at the edges of this um, bird's feathers and this click on refine hair. And you can see it might have improved it. It actually might have made it worse in here. So I'm just going to undo it by hitting Command Z. But for hair on a person, it usually does a great job. But to refine this even further, don't worry about all these sliders over here because that's like old stuff because it's been improved since then. Uh, what All you need to do really is click on decontaminate colors. When you click on decontaminate colors, that usually will improve it. And if you look, I'll uncheck it. Look around the edges. I'm going to check it. And you can see I brought out more feather detail. Like look at right in here. There's before and there's after. So it did a great job. You just want to output it to a new layer with layer mask. And when you do, it will be done. What it did was it turned off that middle layer. So this is that middle layer that had the bad background. It's got a layer with a layer mask, just like we did when I did the remove background. And it's allowing this background to come through. Because if I turn this off, you see we just have blank pixels. But if I turn it back on, you know we have that layer. You can take this middle layer if you want and just throw it right in the trash. Just drag it right down there and throw it right out. You don't need it. And here is our upscaled image. Now, as I mentioned, the whole reason why we're doing this is because we want to get a higher quality print. So we need to get this out of Photoshop. Most photo labs require a JPEG. Some will accept TIFF files, but most of, most of them want a JPEG. To export this as a JPEG, go up to File, then down to Export, then to over to Export As. So going to do you do a JPEG. Make sure quality is at as high as it could go, which is 7. Not going to resize it at all. So this is our upscaled image, 4,000 pixels by 2,668 pixels. Don't worry about canvas size. Metadata, maybe you want your copyright and contact info in there. Maybe not. It's up to you. Content create, uh, credentials, that's just putting in that if you used AI, it's going to be in saying, hey, AI was done on this, and here's where you could contact the photographer. So you don't need that, really. Um, most labs want an sRGB in image, so you'd going to want to convert it to sRGB and embed the color profile and then just click export and then it's going to ask you where and to give it a name I'm going to just I'll modify the name uh, slightly I'm just going to write large all right so I'm not overwriting the original one although it does change it at the end so we'll go and click save 
And that's it. That's if you want to save now all your work in Photoshop, because maybe you want to go back and modify the mask or something like that. In that case, then go up to file, then down to save as, and then go here and like a TIFF file or a Photoshop file, maybe, and just save it like that. And once it's saved, you'll be able to close down. Again, this is in the beta version of Photoshop, but hopefully it moves over to the current version of Photoshop very soon. Here's our original low-resolution image. Here is the, the upscale JPEG, and this is the PSD file. That is, if we wanted to go back in and change anything in Photoshop or modify Photoshop or something like that, we'd be able to do that. But here's our upscaled image. You can see it's much bigger. It's using the original background, which looked a lot better than the upscaled background. And it looks great. I think this would be um, a good specimen to get a decent print from. And that's it. That's how you could use generative upscale that is currently only in the beta version of Photoshop. And by the way, on my website, I have a resolution print guide. It's a PDF that you can download and print at home that will show various sizes and the minimum resolution you will need to get that size print. It's totally free. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Also, I have an entire course on Photoshop. I'll have that on sale and I have a link to that. In the, dis in the description below this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.